Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing great. Let's get this day six. Is it day six? It is day six started. So let's do this thing. Um, here we go. All right. So Anybody who's new, anybody who's watching live, anybody who's watching the replay, say hello. I love seeing that you're here. I love seeing that you're doing the work to uplift your home into a sacred space and make your house look amazing and feel amazing. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I am having so much fun. You guys have no idea. And I'm loving seeing some of the transformation that you already have. Today, we are going into the biggest issues and the most powerful way to transform your space into a beautiful space. Um, we are covering what I call the three, um, what do I actually call this? I don't even know exactly what I call them, but I know it's, I always say three is a magic number. And it's the three main things that you need in your room to take it from undone to pretty much 80% complete, okay? So if you've been following and you've been doing the process, today is a six, and that means that today with what you do and you apply in your room, your space will be 80% complete. And that is amazing because think about it for a second, how long have you been procrastinating into getting this room done? A long time probably, and um, no judgment there, trust me, most people in the group um, are here because of that. And so I'm really excited to see that you could do this with this free challenge. Now, of course, there's a lot of deeper details to everything that I'm teaching you. Of course, I'm doing my best to share with you the most I can in this very short amount of time. But if you're ready to go deeper, not only in the beautiful aspect of transforming the design of your home and how it looks and choosing the right pieces, choosing the right furniture, choosing the right fabric and colors, but also in the sacred aspect and the embodiment of the energetics of the space, where each area of your home is related to every area of your life, embodiment practices, then make sure you check out my new signature program that is launching next week. You guys inside of this challenge get the sneak peek of the initial pre-launch of this program. So check it out at the end. Anyways, here we go. What are these three things that I'm talking about? They are rugs, lighting, and window treatments, okay? They are the three things most people do wrong. They are the biggest issue that people have in the room and why it looks not put together and feels completely off. They are also the most powerful way to get your room to look like a professional interior designer did the room and worked with you in the room versus cheap, scattered, and not cohesive. So it is super powerful what these three things can do to a room in both making it look amazing or making it look horrible, okay? It elevates your room really quickly. So I'm gonna start with the rugs, okay? The first issue I see with rugs most of the time is that they are too small. Simply, simply, simply put, they are too small. Your rugs for the space need to be large. The larger, the better. Of course, there's a way to make them look the right way. The larger your room, the larger your rug. So in the, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday we did the furniture layout. Once you have your furniture laid out, okay, your rug, the size of the rug will be determined by that layout. So when the room is feeling um, too small or the room is feeling too empty, this is one of the biggest things a rug can do for your room. It will help you make the room feel and look bigger and it will also help you you know, make the room more complete and filled intentionally without 
all the little knickknacks. This is usually because people don't have these three components in place, why they make up for not having them by buying more things, buying more knickknacks, buying more cute little quotes for the walls, buying more picture frames, more candles, more vases, more little decorative things that when you think about it, all they really do is compete for attention and none of them actually feel like they are a part of the room intentionally, okay? So um, that's the first thing I'll say about rugs, that usually they are too small. Most of the time, um, when you look at your inspirational pictures in Pinterest or any of the images you have, I want you to pay attention because most of the time you will see that the rooms have a larger rug in them, okay? I'm gonna guide you through how you know what the right size is. Now, I wanna tell you something really quick. Sorry, I have something in my eye. Rugs are also a really good way to um, add a lot of style in your room without, again, all the little knickknacks because you can introduce a lot of color, you can introduce a lot of pattern, you can introduce texture. So you want to think of a rug as either a very neutral anchoring thing, right? So something that's in a very neutral color is simply going to help you with the, the scale of the room and anchoring the furniture into one or it's also going to be like a piece of art. It's going to add that pop of color, that uh, specific style that you might be wanting to convey in the space. If you're using florals, if you're using stripes, if you're using geometric shapes in a rug, that helps you define the style a lot without taking a lot of room and without cluttering the space with more things. So they are great for your bedroom, for your family room, for your dining room. Whether you own or you rent, uh, rugs are actually the best way to not just hide your floors because that's not the only purpose. Of course, if you're renting or if you just don't like your floor at, at all, rugs are a great way and a great trick to cover those floors up um, and create a lot of like a statement in a room as well. But even if you love your floors, a rug is only going to just amplify the beauty of your of your flooring as well because it's going to help you create that, again, anchoring piece with the furniture arrangement. And so you can appreciate almost like the empty space around it, which would be the flooring. OK, so after your furniture is placed and you know where the furniture is going, that's how you know where the rug should be. Another trick that I really like with rugs is layering them. So if, for example, you have a rug that you love right now and you're realizing it's too small based on the pictures you're looking at and based at some of the tips I'm going to give you soon, as far as size goes, then you can actually buy a bigger rug, maybe like a neutral rug, something in like a grass, a seagrass kind of a feeling or um, a jute rug with just a very neutral color palette. And then you can put your smaller rug that maybe has a cool vintage Persian vibe or just a style in general or a pattern and you can put it on top. And this is a great way to, um, again, use what you already have, but also to um, expand a room. I love layering rugs sometimes when I'm trying to either expand a room, like yesterday we talked about multiple zones in one area, so I might have a rectangular rug for the living room. And then if the kids have a little play corner in the living room as well, I might have like a cowhide shape rug on the side or a round shape on the side. And so that is also called layering. And it's a really fun way to add a lot of, again, momentum to that little space, that little zone, that little corner that you are trying to um to work with. I'm trying to read a question here. I have a rug that's too large, wall to wall, pulling it out to put in vinyl, but needs to be soft enough for yoga. So many choices. Yes, there are a lot of choices for rugs for sure. And so that is something that um, is a little bit tricky to do when you're shopping online for a rug, unless you know what materials um, feel like. And so you, you do your research, right? Naturally, 
Um, more inexpensive rugs that are not made out of natural materials tend to be a little bit more rough. Um, some other materials are a lot softer. There's wool rugs that can feel really itchy and scratchy, but there's also much softer alternatives to that as well. So if feeling and texture, I work a lot with this with kids' rooms, for example, because how they feel is important. They're on the floor all the time. Then it's always easier and better to be able to see them in person, okay? And um, I'll give you some of my, my uh, favorite places to buy rugs, um, which is the other point I wanna make, is that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money in rugs. A lot of people feel overwhelmed by the prices of rugs sometimes, and you the truth is you don't need to buy a $5,000 rug to fit in your space. Uh, yesterday or the day before, I think, in the challenge, I talked about my experience with a very high-end customer of mine years and years ago before I transitioned to sacred interior design and was just doing high-end design and I had a client who bought a $27,000 rug for a small space and it was it was I just I was like this I was speechless at the time because I could not understand how spending that much for a small rug it was literally like a runner it wasn't even like a big large rug um and it still didn't even make sense based on you know the style we were going for and um you know the other side of that story is that it just it was beautiful but it it didn't feel homey or like there was any soul in the space anyways i'm sidetracking here but my point is, yes, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Of course, the larger the rug is, the more money it will cost. However, what I have found is that most of the time, we tend to be um, afraid to invest in larger pieces that make more sense in our room, that are going to elevate our home a lot more that are going to elevate the style that are also going to be timeless and last us a long time versus the multiple trips to home goods to buy a bunch of knickknacks and i'm saying this with a lot of love and with a lot of respect i am not judging you if that's what you are doing but i want to challenge you to think differently because when we are willing to invest I mean, there's a whole nother side of this, which is when we are willing to invest in ourselves and the life that we are designing, right? But when we are willing to invest in pieces that are higher quality and that are, um, you know, better made, that are, yes, sustainable, um, that are maybe coming from a much better place, right? Maybe they're handmade pieces, like I love doing that, investing in pieces that are meaningful in that way. But you don't also, you don't have to do it only that way. You can still buy retail, you can still do whatever feels good to you based on your budget as well. However, it makes a lot more powerful, it's a much more powerful statement in your room to invest in a larger, more substantial piece that gives you more presence and again elevates the style of your space more than even if it's a one-time price that is bigger than you're used to versus the multiple trips with 50 bucks 70 bucks 100 bucks here and there that are just a bunch of stuff stuff that you're going to end up giving away throwing away um, not even liking and not even valuing either so i highly recommend that you take some um you know inventory of your habits of maybe what you have been doing to decorate your room in the past and how can you shift that towards buying pieces that make more sense and that um, are a lot, you know, make a lot more of a statement. So um, just FYI, I've already broken my promise of 11 minutes today again, and I'm okay with that if you're okay with that. So let's move on though, a little bit more about rugs. What I want you to also pay attention when you notice them in the Pinterest boards and in your images is that there's a relationship between the rug and the furniture that it is placed under okay so in the living room one of the biggest uh pet peeves about pet peeves about this rug placement is you want your sofa your main seating your primary seating to be placed 
on the rug substantially. Like I don't want you to have the legs of the sofa, the front legs of the sofa, just like an inch on the rug. It should be in a good amount of space, maybe a foot, maybe half a foot. Um, something that feels like it is firmly placed on the rug. That is something that's going to help you create, again, a more anchored seating area or bedroom area or whatever. Um, what else can I share with you about rugs before I move on to the other two things? Um, you know, I think the main thing that I want to tell you about rugs is try them. Try them. Go bigger. Um, when you have them in the bedroom, I'll give you this tip real quick. When you have them in the bedroom, do your best to have the sides of the rug extend a good amount of space from where the bed is. So the first thing is you want the rug to be under the bed a good amount. Most people place their rug too far out from the bed and again another way to add more style and uh, more of an intentional setup is bring the rug in towards the headboard more maybe like three-thirds of the way there and then on the sides the rug from the bed it should be wide enough that when you get up from the bed, you're stepping on the rug. Your feet are on the rug firmly planted as opposed to the cold tile or whatever other flooring you might have. So that's a good tip for, um, you know, for the rug being there as well. Let me see, what else do I want to tell you about, about this? Okay, I think that's probably um, it for the rugs. I want to be able to move on to drapes and lighting. So, Let's go to drapes, window treatments. Window treatments, again, are also one of those things that can be very expensive if you go custom, okay? The custom route of window treatment is obnoxious. It's really high end and it's very expensive. And most people, regardless of their budget, are crazy surprised when we quote our window treatments inside of our um, interior design firm. So I have learned to be very creative with window treatments for a couple of reasons. One, because I wanna make the most out of my client's budget, right? I want to splurge on pieces that make the most sense and save on things that make the most sense as well. But the other thing is that most of the time it's not necessary to go to the custom route. Unless you have some really strange sized ceilings, um, you know, like in the area where I live in South Florida, there's a lot of very high end homes. And so we have really, really high ceilings. That's a reason to go custom, absolutely. But if you have standard ceilings, eight foot ceilings, 10 foot ceilings, you don't really need to go that route unless you want to, of course. So the main thing about drapes is their functionality. Yesterday we talked about function always coming first, and this is the same thing for drapes. You want to decide why you want window treatments first. Is it because you want to control light? Is it because you need privacy? Is it because you want an aesthetic touch and a style, a touch of style on your walls and windows? Those three things are really the basis of deciding what window tra treatments to get, okay? So if you need light control, then the best way to go about it, and it's the same for privacy really, is to have either Roman shades or roller shades or any kind of window treatment that is embedded inside of the frame of the window itself. That is your best, um, you know, your best bet for high function when it comes to light control and privacy. However, even if you use those, I almost always, unless I'm doing a very, very modern home, almost always have drapes on the side of the window as well. My favorite way to do window treatments is to combine both the roller shades, the Roman shades, the privacy and light control, plus the aesthetic drapes that hang on the rod itself, okay? The biggest mistake I, I see people make is that they buy skimpy, cheap little curtains and pretend to use them for light and privacy. And so they roll them and close them and open them and close them. But what happens is not only do they not work properly for privacy and light control, but they also look horrible from the outside of the home. And if you're not a big... Um, 
you know, if you're not big into these kinds of details, then maybe that works for you. But if you're wanting to have a uh, professionally sort of designed home and you want it to feel really beautiful, intentional, clean, then your best option is to go with the roller shades inside and go with the drapes only for the core, not necessarily meant to open and close. However, I know I'm probably saturating you guys with so much information, but I just, I'm, I'm on a roll. So, however, you can buy drapes to open and close if you don't want to go the route of roller shades. Again, I prefer roller shades and drapes, but if you don't want to go that route, just make sure you have drapes that have a lining in the back. The lining can oftentimes be white. Um, other times it can be black, but the lighting helps with the privacy and light control, but also it helps so that the curtains show in that neutral color in the background so that your neighbors see a better view too. Um, otherwise, if you have yellow curtains or flower curtains and that's what they're looking on the outside, it might not necessarily go with you know, the lighting and it might not necessarily go with just it doesn't look as good. So. That's something that is important for me when I consider window treatments. The other thing about window treatments is the height. The main, main, main way to have, again, that either um, elevated state and elevated look of window treatments versus cheap looking window treatments, even if they are cheap. One little secret I would tell you is my favorite drapes are from Ikea. They are my favorite drapes in the world because they work with every room I ever work with. Um, they come in white and they are like a linen sort of a, a look and they are fabulous. They work so beautiful. They come in, uh, I think it's 125 inches, but you can hem them, you can hem the bottom very easily and uh, customize them to the size you want. There is a fantastic fabric a uh, glue strip that I buy on Amazon. If you want the link, send me a message after this video and I'll send it to you. And it's fantastic. It's this thin little like gaze looking um, tape. It's not sticky unless you heat it up. And so I put it on and sometimes I even just grab my hair uh, flat iron and I just squeeze the, the bottom of the drape and it hems perfectly. It's like magic. I love it. Now, Yes, you have to hang your drapes high enough. Otherwise, that's the biggest issue with drapes and why they look cheap is the rule for me and for the designs everywhere I work with window treatments is the window treatments are hung as high as you can on the wall, as close to the ceiling as possible, as high on the wall, as close to the ceiling as possible, and at least six to nine inches wider than the window itself, okay? What does that do? That elevates your eye and draws your eye up and it makes the room feel larger. It makes the walls feel taller, the ceiling feel taller, the window feel bigger. It's just the way to do it. That being said, um, your the length of your drapes should be at least an inch um, you know, as low as an inch above the floor. That's the shortest. I like them, but really I love when they fall either right on the floor or even depending on the look and the style you're going for, they puddle on the floor as well. Now, if you have dogs, if you have pets that could potentially pee on them, that's not such a great idea. If you have kids, sometimes that's not a great idea, but depending on you know your personal style and your living situation, that's also a really beautiful way to do it. So don't worry if they're a little longer. Worry more if they are too short. If the curtains are too short, that's that's just a no-no, okay? So, awesome. I did that. What else am I gonna tell you about? I'm going to tell you about lighting. So lighting is another thing that is super important. Um, I used to be a lighting designer back in the day and I'm so grateful that I had that experience because I learned a lot in that world. Um, I learned a lot more than I ever did in design school about lighting, working as a lighting designer. So 
What are the main things for lighting in your room? The main things for lighting in your room is that you have several sources of lighting in one room. What I like to do is to make sure that every single room has at least three layers of lighting. One layer can be your natural light, right? Which is the biggest gift and the biggest resource we have. The most beautiful way to bring a warming, cozy, inviting energy into your room is natural light. Not everybody has that in every room, but that counts as one layer. The second layer can be your overhead lighting, meaning any lights in your ceiling, whether it's recess lighting, whether it's a channel, chandelier, whether it's any kind of lighting above the head, that's what we call overhead lighting. It is never the main, um, you know, the main layer of lighting that I like to rely upon. Again, I love to mix and match these layers because that's what makes the mood and the ambience of the room unique. It is what, um, you know, changes the environment, right? Changes the way a room feels, whether it's cold and stark and dark and scattered or cozy and warm and inviting. And then the third layer I like to use is either task lighting or accent lighting. So what does that mean? Well, natural light, we know. Father, son, the beautiful energy of nature, that's uh, priceless, the biggest resource we can have. But the second one in overhead lighting, the biggest way you can make the most impact is also with a chandelier and big pieces of lighting. This is also the biggest issue I see in a lot of my clients' homes before they work with me is they buy chandeliers that are too small for the space, okay? Chandeliers have, there are specific formulas to choose the right size in general you want to um add the dimensions of your room and i'm not going to get too technical i can see already i'm going in the deep end um, but usually to select a chandelier for a room the the rule of thumb is you add the dimension of the room so if you have a 12 by 20 or if you have a 12 by 12 room or 20 by 20 you add that and whatever number you get that's the ideal size of your chandelier when in doubt, I like to go a little bit bigger um, because I would rather have more presence than less. But if I don't want so much presence from my light because maybe I have some crazy wall treatment going on or something like that, then I might go a tiny bit smaller. But in general, go at least the size of those dimensions put together, okay? That's a great tip I just gave you because it makes a huge difference. Now, you don't want to choose lighting that is skimpy, you guys. Like, I don't know why so many people do this. I, I mean, maybe it's because it's inexpensive, I don't know, but please don't choose skimpy little chandeliers or even specially table lamps. Table lamps that are skimpy annoy me so much. Um, they need to be substantial. They need to be meaningful. Think of light as radiance. I get chills. Think of light as, you know, reflection of your beauty in a space, right? When we think of darkness versus light, the difference in that energetically is huge. And there's nothing wrong with the darkness when you need it. But when we're talking about a room that we're wanting to uplift into a sacred space, lighting is such a powerful way to do that. So please don't get skimpy lights that are kind of ignored and lost in the room. Make your table lamps art. Choose pieces that are large, that are substantial, that are, um, you know, that are strong and that are chunky and stable because they also are a representation of your fire energy. They're a representation of your passion, of your commitment to what you're creating in the world. And this is little things like this. I know it, sometimes it sounds really woo and it sounds really esoteric and almost like, what is she talking about? But I'm going with it because this is what I do and this is what I love to do the most is to use these material things in our spaces to translate into a deeper meaning, to symbolize a deeper part of us and lighting is my favorite 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 way to do that and it's no coincidence that I ended up being a lighting designer so I always think of that so make sure that um, you have nice 
big lamps that make a statement. Um, make sure this is something important. Make sure that you choose the right temperature of light color. And I might just have to do a separate video on that because it is a big deal and it is a big topic. Um, but in general, there are different temperatures of color in light bulbs. Some are, you might have seen it like really white light, really bright, almost like blue tinted light. That's usually something you want to stay away from unless it's a laundry room, maybe a garage, sometimes even a closet. But for general use in every room, please stay away for that, from that. That's usually in the 5K uh, temperature color. And I know that sounds probably like nothing to you, but if you start reading the boxes of light bulbs, you will see, just like when you read food ingredients, there are color temperatures in those light bulbs that define how the color of the light is, which also, ready? defines psychologically how you feel, defines your mood, affects your mood, affects how people function in a space. They actually, um, I was reading this study about architects who design jails and prisons, and there's so much they do with lighting to manipulate the energy of a space. I know that sounds really heavy, but it's true, they do it. And so, in general, for your home, choose lighting that is warm, that it's as close to father's sun as you can think of. Usually that means 3000 in Kelvin color temperature. Um, some places like Home Depot or Lowe's, they call it a soft, warm light. Basically, that's what you're looking for. But just make sure that you keep that in mind. The other great, great investment you can do is to invest in dimmers and have as many dimmers in your home as you can because that gives you control of how high or low you want the light and it gives you control of the environment you want to create. When it's bedtime in my home around six o'clock every day, I do what I call putting my house to sleep or getting my house ready for sleep. So I start dimming all my lights, I turn my little table lamps on, I might light some candles around the house and this sends a message to our brain that it's time to slow down it sends a message to my kids brain <laughs> that it's time to slow down it's time for bedtime so those are really good tips that I just share with you about um, about lighting if you feel your room is too dark or it's too dim then most likely you only have one maybe two layers of lighting so make sure you have at least three i've heard of designers who even use up to seven layers of light which i think is a little much but you can go as high as you need so think of layering them as sunlight overhead light so chandelier um, recess lights but then also add table lights floor lamps i love uh wall sconces and i love a lot of different ones from either wayfair or lamps plus or even amazon sometimes has really good uh, plug-in wall sconces so you don't have to have any hard wiring or any electrical work you just plug them in and attach them to the wall they are beautiful, they add so much charm, and that's another layer of lighting for you right there. So I think that's pretty much it, you guys. Again, if you are on day six, and you do these three things, you use these three magic things, rugs, drapes, and lighting, you will be about 80% complete with your room design. And I'm so excited because we are going to move into tomorrow and the next day, I think we still have like four more days left of the challenge, we're going to go into decorating, right? So putting all that like icing on the cake. How do you make your home your talisman? How do you decorate your home as a reflection of you with all those sentimental pieces, those meaningful pieces? We're gonna go into that later. We're gonna go into the energetics. We're gonna go into so much more, but as of now, your room itself is about 80% complete. Look at your Pinterest boards. That is your sacred action item of today. Look through your Pinterest boards and your images and see, observe the rug sizes they have, the window treatments they have, the height, 
See where they've placed them, how tall they are. Look at the lighting. You probably, I almost guarantee it, have pictures in those Pinterest boards that have beautiful chandeliers. They don't have to be pricey. They don't have to be expensive. Trust me, I know lighting can be very expensive, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can make a lot of statement in our room with an inexpensive lighting piece as long as the right size is selected. And when you're in doubt, bigger is better for rugs and lighting too, okay? Thank you so much. I will see you guys tomorrow and I hope you guys have a great day. Satnam.